calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. Gardening with Tanya is proudly brought to you by Mayford. Grow your own lush green lawn. Macro Home and Garden. High quality products, a must have for every gardener. Wonder, for the love of gardening. And TanyaFisser.com, for all your gardening goodies and supplies. Good morning everybody from a very, very dark, dark as a guy. Why is that? Well, I think the monkeys have been running along the electricity lines as they do in the mornings and something's blown up. So we're on the inverter this morning. Um, we're praying and we're hoping that the battery's going to last. So it's very dark except for where I am. Um, uh, guys, uh, welcome to Facebook Live. And today we're talking about is your lawn a mess? And heck, what else is not a mess? There's a whole lot of craziness going on in our world, um, but we're here and we're with you, and we're going to make your gardening journey that much easier. Guys, you know, when things go wrong, they go wrong. And when our lawn is wrong, <gasps> listen, and I am, oh, I'm so anal about my lawn. Um, it, it really is a problem. I, I really should take extra medication for that. Um, but when it goes wrong, <laughs> um, you know, the, the garden beds just don't look right. You know when you've been away on a holiday or whatever and um, you come back and the lawn is long and uh, and you just give it a cut. Man, there's an inner satisfaction that just, you can't describe it. And immediately your garden looks, wow, so much better. It really, really does. So we, we, we live in a country where the winters are cold. The winters are cold and it's been particularly colder this winter. I think it's our coldest winter we've had in like 10 years or something. I've heard reports from all over the country. Yeah, it is. It's been cold, which means things have suffered, which means our lawn has suffered. Uh, my lawn certainly is. In fact, when I was writing our welcome note the other day for our September issue, I was like, I've never seen it looking this bad. Ever, 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 ever. So, um, if you're tuned into this and if you're tuning in later, guys, this is where the remedies are going to be shared. Um, it's really simple. It's really practical. Don't overthink it um, because we will get you through it. Um, we also need something from the big skies up above. We need rain. Uh, we really need some rain. Uh, the Western Cape has had loads of it. They're looking green. They're looking so, so green. But Gauteng, KZN, down the garden route or just before you, you hit in that Western Cape Belt, it's, it's dry, guys, it's dry. So um, if you've got a, a, a direct link to the big man upstairs, you know, some of, your, some of you guys have fiber links. I think I'm still on dial-up ADSL. Yeah, true story. <laughs> I think we, we need, we need to, to really get down on our hands and knees and start praying because I want rain. Um, my, my tank's are empty. And uh, yeah, this is where it is now. And uh, we've really got we to make sure that we get some rain. But anyway, guys, anyway, 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 let's see who's online this morning. Um, and let's take a hello and a, and a big, big welcome. Um, uh, Hardy, Hardy, you got rain, you got rain. In PE, Kai Karamba. Um, Diane, good, min good morning from Itanacha. 
Etenhagen, Utenhag. Um, yes, I love Etenhagen. Um, you've got some very nice secondhand shops there. <gasps> oh, yes. Beautiful old Oregon pan. And yeah, yeah, like this guy, like this guy. I mean, this table, uh, we, I really didn't have to get it, but I did buy it um, because anything with old wood, just it just talks to me. I mean, you know, sometimes I wish we could kind of like plug in, you know, have a port where we could plug into old furniture and have a conversation and listen in to the discussions that happened. I'm sure there were omas on this workbench and opas who did made things and and oh man don't you wish we could do that it, it's like they talk to me um and that's the problem with wood i am digressing but i really do have to share this the problem with a piece of wood is that when i see a piece of wood i have it do i have a reason to do something with it no no but i will create a reason to do to make something with it um, because wood just has that earthy, beautiful feel and the history, the history, the history. It's like, um, it was a movie, I think, called If Walls Could Talk. Is that right? If Walls Could Talk? Or was it a book? I don't know. Help me out. Okay. Um, uh, Nikki, Nikki van der Linde from the UK. A very wet summer. Hi, caramba. You better tell them that it's coming. It's, it's, it's summer, guys. Yeah, you better start telling them, but um, sure, yeah, but you're waning off already. What are you now? Oh, yes, you're going to start getting chilly. Um, but, um, but send my love, please, uh, send my love to Monty. If you see Monty in the street, like maybe just buying veggies or something or, or whatever, um, please send my, my deepest, most sincerest love to Monty Don because he's like my other major, major gardening hero and I just love him to bits. And I saw that he made his summer house um, which has now sent Isolde and I off on a complete other tangent, and um, we're building a tin shack. I know, I know, I can't wait, I, I can't wait, and um, inspired by my late brother, because uh, when we were living together, um, <laughs> uh, all of us as kids in the house, I was clearly very, very irritating. Yeah, so the one day he told my dad that um, he's building a house, and true's goodness, in the middle of his vegetable garden, he sunk some CCA-treated uh, poles and put some corrugated iron around the edges, um, put a roof on, even had a little bathroom, and built himself a shack. So we are going to be building a summer house shack. And we might even go and have a sleepover. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Mr. Funk. Good morning, Paulus. Mr. President, sir, I salute you. Um, good morning, Nomtanzo. Um, uh, we, we, oh, from a dry springs, yeah, and windy, I know, I know, August winds. Um, Shamla, good morning from light rain in the Cape. Ah, Janine, good morning from Artis. Ay, ma, there's a lack of black dye. Um, good pizzas, good restaurants, and very nice hard out. Ne, yeah. Um, Yvonne, good morning, Suzanne. Um, from a rainy and cold Nasna, oh, I hope that you've got the hot chocolate or something with a dash of something in it. Um, Dirk, good morning. Um, Immaculate, good morning from Queenstown. I don't think I've seen you on before, so welcome, Immaculate. Uh, TK, Chola from Bloom, welcome. Marinda, um, Jean, good morning. Oh, uh, Janine's from, from Australia. Oh, hi. What do I say? How do I say in Australia? Australian. Howdy, mate. Oh, howdy, mate. Howdy. Oh, if you're looking at my elbow, look, look, I've got a big Aina on my elbow. Um, running this morning, as I always am in a hurry to get anywhere, me and the elbow, um, the elbow actually whacked the wall, and now I've got a big gash in there, and there was blood all over on the kitchen counter. Um, so now I have a very big, except I really should have something like, um, like Mickey Mouse on it or something like that. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Um, let's go and see who else is here. Maureen is here. Sharon is here. Laval, good morning. Hello again. Um, Elke is here from Lakeside. Renata Fisser is back. Hello. Kathy, um, like when you haven't been to the hairdresser. What am I talking about? Oh. oh. <laughs> 
well, he, uh, that's too true. Is that when the roots start showing? Is that when your roots start showing? When you haven't been to the hairdresser? You know, apparently you must just uh, dilute, you must just um, take some rosemary. And um, this is what Margaret Roberts said. Uh, take some rosemary sprigs and put it in some hot water, steep it, add um, a drop or two of beer. Yes, 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 yes. Our grannies used to do this. Um, and, um, and wash your hair and apparently it washes away the grey. You can see I haven't done that. Um, but anyway, uh, I might need to like dip my head in there for a week. Uh, Mark, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Um, Teresa, uh, raining in Paradise Beach today. You oaks are so lucky, lucky. Um, you must go outside and do this. <sighs> and you must blow those clouds here, please. Um, Hetty, good morning. Um, Suzanne, I've said good morning to uh, who else is here? Oh, what's this thing doing? Oh, no, I don't want to send anything. Um, cancel. Oh, I'm pushing the wrong buttons again. Yo. Um, Prakash, good morning. Richard, give. Wow, good morning, Richard, from the Lifestyle College. Um, the Lifestyle College, one of the oldest colleges that are going, they teach us about gardening, being a landscaper, how to cook. Um, oh, man, they've got awesome awesome um courses that you can do part-time full-time richard good on you and you know what his students happen to read a really good gardening magazine called the garden and detainee um uh, good morning marcus deirdre good morning um liana de villiers good morning man guys it's so good to see you all here um okay so we're talking about messy lawns and and we're going to break this down and we're going to do it in bite-sized chunks. It's like the way we eat an elephant, little chews at a time. Okay, so we're really going to keep this as simple as possible. Let's, let's start with the thing, why? Okay, why? Quite simple. It's dry. Lawns are actual like artificial creations by us humans because nowhere in the world do you go even when you, wherever you're driving and see a, a beautiful lawn. No, nature did not intend that. They purely for our pleasure alone. And what happens then is that anything for our pleasure alone requires maintenance and insight, and it requires some doing action. As the water table drops during the winter months, so the lawn takes a little bit more strain and gets a bit more stressed out. As that water level drops, something goes on. The weeds take hold. Yes, because the weeds generally that we find in our lawn, a lot of them have tap roots, which means that their roots go deeper than the lawn's roots. Ah, so that how it works. That's why they grow, grow, grow so quickly because during the winter, they getting the nutrients and the nutrition and the moisture faster and quicker than the lawn does. So that's why they look gorgeous, you know gorgeous um, but we're going to touch on how to deal with weeds as well so we've also got things called uh, something called the path of the sun okay now every winter in our garden every single winter when we built this house we built the house for the view yeah we didn't build it for the curve of the sun and in winter the sun is here and the house is there which means that the front of the house where the lawn is gets at least three meters, at least half of the lawn is in permanent shade right throughout the winter, which means it takes serious strain. Um, and so it's those shadows that also have an effect on our lawns. As soon as the sun starts lifting and moving up higher into the sky, um, as soon as spring and summer start arriving, the lawn comes right but it takes some effort, all right? So we, we've got to get things going. And um, there are various ways that we deal with that, and we're going to cover all of that today. So the next thing that we have is where dogs, humans, whatever else you might reside in your garden, walk. And there are paths, and they walk. And, you know, if your dogs have decided that that's my path, left to right across the lawn. Boys and girls, you ain't gonna change that except by putting up a fence and change their habit, okay? 
not only their habit, but our habit as well. Because it's like we pre-programmed, we just walk in that direction. So we've got to change the habit and we've got to give that lawn time to be able to breathe. Now one of the things that happens during winter is that something called compaction. Mm, compaction. And that's because we're not having much mo moisture. Um, the activity that goes on the lawn, not that it's less or more, but what happens is the soil gets compacted and that happens over time. So guys, um, one of the things that I want you to do, and you might never have done this, but I want you to fork your lawn. Yeah, you heard me right, fork your lawn. So, <laughs> so what you're gonna need is a very, very good garden fork, okay? Now there are things that you can hire from your local hardware store um, or hiring place which are called hollow tine aerators. Now I've hired one or two of these in my, in my gardening lifetime and man is it a machine. Um, and what this basically does is it's got hollow tine. So imagine this is what we call a tine except it's hollow over here. All right. And this thing you normally petrol operated, you start this guy up and then it goes along the surface of the lawn and as it's going along these tines dig in to the soil and pull out tubes of soil tubes so in other words we end up with holes ah and that is a way of aerating your lawn okay once you've done that that's the first step in our spring treatment okay if you not if you can't get hold of one of those um, whatever then you're going to stick with this which is your garden fork and folks you are going to go around and you are going to fork the lawn as a bliss and when you're doing this it takes quite a bit of physical power and you're certainly going to know that you had some muscles over here by the end of it because they're going to be talking to you um, but I need you to take this, this, this fork and I need you to dig it into the lawn at least 15 centimeters at least if you can Okay, so you're going to dig it in and then just wiggle, wiggle, pull it out. Not dig and lift, please. We're not doing that. So it's in, wiggle, wiggle, up. All right, by doing that, what we're doing now is we're taking the soil and basically we're just pushing it out a bit. We're creating some air pockets and we all know that you need air. Soil needs air in order to be healthy. Air pockets. Okay, right. So that's them, guys out the window okay now if you've got a kukuyu lawn and only a kukuyu lawn then I need you to do the following and if you haven't done this in a few years definitely is now the time kukuyu grows in mounds okay and it gets quite bunchy so and you'll feel it when you're walking on it it's, it's kind of like quite springy okay so what I want you to do is to lower your lawnmower height like to the lowest lowest and you're going to need to do this in, in stages okay if you put your lawnmower all the way down and go it's going to go eh, 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 and it's going to cough and splatter and it's going to and it's it's going to stop working okay probably burn out so i want you to do this in stages lower it cut lower it cut lower it cut until you get down to almost soil so you've got these your kukuyu stolons which are the the, the surface roots growing and they flush 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 with the soil Okay, that is called scarifying. That process is called scarifying. When you are taking all that top growth off, okay, if you've got Kukuya lawn and you're down to this base. All right. Then you will go and fork. You could have done the forking before. It doesn't really matter. And when you're cutting like this, you want to rake up all of the bits, all of the, the lawn clippings that you've, that you've um, cut must not be left there. You've got to scrape those all up. All right. Then what you're going to do is you are going to take this. It is a metal rake, guys, a metal rake. Okay, now with a metal rake, you are then going to rake the lawn. Okay, and you can do this. Did we hear that noise? Oh, that is the, oh, that's the battery for the, the garage door. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, you're going to take this and you're going to rake the lawn. And when you're raking the lawn, and you can do this on any of your lawns, um, whether you've got Berea, 
um, whether you've got a synodin, because all it's doing is when you're raking it, you're going to pull up any of those long stolons that are like, that are, that are wild. They're just going. You're going to rake those up and you're also going to take away a lot of what we call the thatch. Now the thatch is the grass bits that are stuck on the soil. And when you have thatch build up, guys, when you have thatch build up, you encounter quite a few problems. Number one, when it does rain, the water doesn't penetrate quick enough. Okay, number two, if you have too much thatch build up, it's perfect conditions for hojos to grow, especially fungal diseases, especially. Okay, um, so that's why we now rake it. Okay, we rake it up, and then once we've raked it, we then put that lawnmower on again. Okay, and we take up all those bits, you know, so the long stolons and that. Okay, so that's that boy out the way. And you're not going to use a rubber rake because a rubber rake ain't going to do it. You want um, a rake with metal tines. Okay, so you can just get that all up. And you'll be amazed once you've done that of how much rubbish actually comes out of in between the lawn. Okay, so guys, um, let's get straight into this over here. Now, for for areas where lawn is battling to grow. Okay. And you know, and I, I've said this time and time again, where lawn is battling to grow, you need to make two decisions. The one is, do I really need the lawn there? Okay. Do, do I actually need it there? Because sometimes we fight with it year in and year out. Okay. And I should be talking to myself here at some point. Um, but we fight with it year in and year out. And maybe we actually just need to get rid of it. Maybe we need to put a garden bed there. Maybe we need to gravel it. Maybe we need to do something else. But if you are fighting with it as an endless losing battle, number one, you either decide to get rid of it, or number two, you need the right remedy. Okay. And uh, guys, we are privileged in South Africa entirely privileged to have many many forms of grass seed available and don't like back off and say i'll never get it right it's far too complicated no it's not complicated really it isn't um and you honestly can get it right and you can do it and what i want you to show you here is this my friends is this over here this is shade over okay so this is a shade over lawn and this, this seed will grow under any tree or wherever there is shade. So whether it's, like I said, in front of my pavers, I could have this there. I could grow this lawn there quite successfully. We've grown it under a big flat crown tree. Fantastic. It's done a really good job. This is where we dug this piece out this morning. And this was only sowed about two months ago. Two, three months ago? Yeah, we sowed this two, three months ago. But what's important... Oh, friends and family, is please follow the instructions. There's lots of very simple instructions here, and if you even can't, if, even if you can't read, they picked us. Okay, the pictures will show you what to do, how hard to cut it, when you must water it, how much per square meter. It tells you everything, and amazingly enough, if you follow the instructions. It works. <laughs> so, so guys, you really can get it right by sowing with seeds. So there are various op options. There's the shade over here. This is All Seasons Evergreen. Now, All Seasons Evergreen is for a more sunny spot. Okay, but what we need to remember with this and with this is that they are tufted. Can you see here? These are tufted lawns. They're not creeping lawns. So they don't have... They're not like a kukuyu. This, so when you're sowing it, boys and girls, when you are sowing it, it is critical that you get the square meterage right. So if it tells you this packet will cover 2.5 square meters, okay? And this is the important part. You see there? See there? Okay, 2.5. Or if it's like this one, that will say this will cover, I think this is 10, this is 10 square meters, Okay? It's really important that we know how much 10 square meters is. <laughs> and it sounds doff, but you've got to know how much 10 square meters is. What is that? 
Is that 10 big steps that way and 10 steps that way? No, that's 100. 10 times 10 is 100. Okay, so it's 2.5, okay, this way, or 3 meters that way. 2 times 3 is 6. No, it's still not that. So you've got to work out your square meters. But, how do I get it? How, because I, I know you've done this, because I did it once or twice. How do you do it? Where you then start, you then start sowing, okay? Now you've prepared your soil, you've done all that right, whatever, you've raked it, then you start sowing. And, and you've worked out your 10 square meters or your 50 square meters, and halfway through, the packet is empty. Must be more near. Ah, what have you done? You've done the wrong sewing application. Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick tip, which I learned from Master Paul, on how to get this right. So let me move this over here. Um, where am I going to move it? Let's put it over here. And I'm going to show you exactly how it works. Okay, so this is Berea. Berea shade, an indigenous lawn. Um, we sewed um, a lot of, we sewed about 10 square meters the other day in the front garden. Yes, where my lawn is, is him, where, where the Berea lawn and I are having a little argy-bargy over winter. Because um, I get very heated at, about these discussions. <gasps> the electricity's just come on. <gasps> Hi, Karamba, praise the Lord. We have power. Okay, okay, I don't need to rush through this now because I've been so stressed about this. And you must see the faces of the crew. So the faces of the crew, like, it's just been like big eyes. Big eyes. Okay, are you all calm now? Warwick, are you calm? No, yes, right. Everybody's calm now. Right, take a deep breath. I think I need a shot of whiskey or something. But anyway, here we go. So, Berea Shade is an indigenous lawn. It's great for shade or for full sun. Okay, you can grow it in either or. I love Berea because it's a soft lawn. It's the lawn that I want to go and lie on. Um, it's quite fluffy um, and it it's just, it's a beautiful lawn. You don't cut it too short. Berea, you keep quite high, okay? And it's one of those lawns where, where you walk, it kind of like goes around your tackies. Oh, I love it. I just love Berea. And um, these guys, um, Mayford, are the first guys to produce Berea lawn seed. Okay, so this says 10 square meters. This is how you work it out, guys. You take a piece of paper, make 10 blocks. Okay, label them if you want. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, this is how you work it out. You then take your packet of seed. Okay, open it up. And now you want to dispense the equal amount of seeds into each block. Okay, because one block represents one square meter. Ah, oh, clever. Okay, so all we want to do now is, and you see how fine the seed is, dispense it, okay, and you go along. There we go. Until we have equal amounts of piles of seed. I'm not asking you to, um, to count the seed, okay? No, I just want equal piles until you have used up every bit of seed that's in this packet, okay? Then it makes sense, you get it. So now we've got seed. How are we looking here? Yeah, you're looking a bit anorexic there. So are you. It's like when you had to hand out Mari biscuits. One for you, two for me. One for you, two for the dog. Five for me, one for the dog. Okay. Um, so once you've done that, okay, you've got your equal piles. Have a look at it. You're going to use your eye. Um, and you've emptied out all the seed here. Basically, the seed here represents one square meter. So then what we do is we have a little bucky. Okay, and we're going to take this, and this requires a bit of precision engineering. Okay, you're going to take whatever is in one square, and you can do it as follows. You can cut it. Um, I had a pair of scissors here somewhere. Ah, you can either then cut this, 
Okay, um, you can cut it here. Keep this, keep this stuff in there. Stay there, stay there, buddy. Stay there. Don't lose them like I'm busy doing at the moment. Okay. And then grab another piece of paper or the back packet of a seed, and we're going to pop this onto here because this now is the seed that we are going to use for one square meter. Okay, so get it off, take it, pop it into a bucky. Okay, there's still some more here. Take all my seed, pop it into there, and this seed must get spread over one square meter. Okay, because the rest is for the other square meters. That's for the remaining nine. Okay, well, that's great. That's all well and good. How on earth are you going to expect me to put these few little seeds over a big one square meter? Well, guys, it gets really simple from here. What I want you to do is mix the seed with a bit of bone meal. Okay, a bit of bone meal. Or just mix it with a bit of sand. So you've bulked it up. Remember, we've spoken about this before. So you bulk it up. And then once it's bulked up, so much easier than to distribute it over one square meter. Then you follow the rest of the instructions, which is to lightly cover it. Remember, the smaller the seed, the less you cover it. Remember this, the smaller the seed, the less you cover it. So it's a very light, very, very light covering by just raking. Take the back of your spade, stomp it down a little bit and a good watering. A very, very good watering. Now, before a gust of wind comes through the garage here, I actually just want to grab the seed and pop it into there, right, and put this in a very safe place. So the critical part to any seed and any germination, and it doesn't matter if it's um, foxgloves, if it's lawn, um, or if it's your lovely little impatience, the critical part is watering. So Sometimes even twice a day, a light watering, depending on if we have dry winds, you're going to have to water even more. Um, for those first, your germination is going to take place between about 15 days, okay, depending on how your temperatures are. So then what I want you to do is make sure you're keeping it well watered every day, all of those days. Soon as it starts germinating, keep on watering a bit, and then when it's about two centimeters, you can then start cutting back a bit on your watering. And guys, it's as easy as that, and we followed those principles for sowing this lovely shade over, and, and it's been fantastic. I mean, it's done the job under a flat crown tree where the lawn just wouldn't grow. And this morning when we were there taking out this piece of lawn, it is so dry there that the ground is actually cracked, and yet this lawn is still doing its thing, which is completely amazing. Um, and remember I said to you that weeds take root quicker during the winter months, and that is because, you see, tap root, this one broke off, flat weeds, long tap root, and you can see, look here, the, 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 um, the roots of the grass are not that deep. Okay, it's not that deep. So the other thing which I want to remind you of is that when you are watering your lawn, guys, you don't need to water it for half an hour. No, because then you're watering the neighbor's lawn. Yeah, it's going down into the water table and it's going off that side. So you don't need to water for long periods of time. It's 10 minutes, maximum 10 minutes at a time. Oh, and all the dogs are here too. Hello, Bahari. Um, right, I've been told I must view the queue. Um, because there's some questions coming through, so let's have a look here. Um, Trudy wants to know, what is the best time to plant lawn in Cape Town, please? I would do it now, 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 now. Now, you've got rain. You've got rain, so you don't even have to water. So plant the lawn now, because you're going into that change into summer, before your hot, hot, dry summer heat arrives. Very important. I would definitely do that. Um, oh, Janet. Is it Janet or Jeanette? Jeanette, how do I ask the moles to move to the neighbours or across the road? Ah! 
How do you? Yes, you, you got to show. Hello, Bahari. Good morning. Morning. Say good morning to everybody. Morning, Bahari. Come, say good morning. Smile for everybody. Say good morning. Smile. Morning, Bahari. Smile. Smile. <laughs> do you see that smile? <laughs> you are such a nana. You are such a nana. Oh, Bahari. You are such a nana. You know what I caught this dog doing the other day? Staring at the fish in the fish tank. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I think it was just licking its lips. Um, <laughs> how do you send your moles to the neighbor's garden? Um, if I had the answer to that, I would be retired on an island, um, probably in Sicily. No. What's the other place I've always wanted to go to? Cyprus. Uh, Cyprus. Yes. So if I had an answer for that, folks, moles have been very active during this winter period. How do I know? Because they've been in my garden. The other morning I was sitting having my coffee and what I'm standing there and I, well, I'm sitting and I'm having my coffee and I'm looking and the, um, uh, the cornflower, the corn, the whole cornflower plant is going. Kum, kum, kum. I'm like, lo and behold, what is happening? Are we having seismic action? You know, volcanic action. No, the volcanic action was the mole underneath going clunk, clunk, busy knocking up my cornflower. Well, did I run? I got the spade, I got the fork, I ran, I put it in, I lifted it. No mole. No mole. So, but the moles have been very, very active. <laughs> because it's been so dry and so they've been looking for food. Guys, when the rains come along, they're going to find other homes and they're probably not gonna be in your garden because they can go back to the felt or even better to your neighbor's garden. Look, there are products on the market that you can get. Um, there's a mole, repel a mole repellent, which is basically works on sonar um, that you stick into the ground. It, it emits these, these, these heavy waves that we can't really hear, but it irritates the moles. They run around like mad. They eventually get so irritated that they do go to the neighbor. Um, you also get some garlic infused products from your local garden center, which are really strong and really heady. You pour those down the, the mole holes, but what's important when you pour it down the mole hill, that you pour it down fresh mole hills, not old ones. So the night before you've got to squash all the mole hills. Okay, squash them, even the, the surface moles. Squash them so the next morning you're only applying it in the fresh, in the fresh tunnels. Pour it in there, take a bit of newspaper, okay, you can even wet it a bit, and push it down that hole, okay? So we've made a cork. Ha, yes. So that all that lovely garlic, smelly, 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 is going to make its way through the tunnel. And um, listen, and the moles don't like it, and they pack their bags and go to Perth. Not quite, but anyway. Um, so, okay, that's that's the mole question. Um, uh, I have Kukuyu uh, Bernica wants to know, I have Kukuyu grass and it looks sad and dying even with all the rain. The rain, the grass is in the shade. Ooh, with little sun. Okay. Let me help you with this. So, Kukuyu, have a look at what the label says. Have a look at this. Sun. Kukuyu needs sun. So what I would recommend that you do is, um, Bernica, I think you, you, you've got to make a decision here. Um, I would either go with the shade over lawn as a seed or I would plant Berea shade seed or, of course, you remember you can get it as instant lawn. But your Kukuyu is never going to be happy because it's in too much shade. Okay. Bottom line. I'm sorry. But, okay. Before we go on to anything else, we've told, spoken about the scarifying, we've spoken about the forking. What I want you to do now is I'm gonna, I want you to watch this next video because next, this next video gives you the next two, it gives you step three and step four and step five on what you need to do to get your lawns right. Okay, take a look. After long cold winters, it's really important that we wake our lawns up. Absolutely, they need a bit of a boomer. 
so that they can decide it's time to wake up and of course everybody wants a beautiful green lawn so how do we get that done let's show you the two or three easy steps that you can get it right if you haven't fertilized your lawn at all this spring then this is the first thing that you need to do the product that you want to use is 232 it's a very general fertilizer. It's your base fertilizer that's used for planting and it's used for literally getting the roots settled. So the 232 does not encourage green growth and it does not encourage flowering. That's not what we want. We want good root growth to really get that right because of course with good roots comes good foliage and that's what we want. So the first application literally is 232 and that you would use at 40 to 60 grams per square meter. It's not a lot and to get it right we're going to show you the gadgets that you need to use in order to get it right. Now what's really important guys is that many of us when we fertilize simply take a handful and start scattering it liberally across the lawn and that's when you end up with those green stripes you know <laughs> like that across the lawn and that's when you haven't used a fertilizer distributor you can invest in these things once and if you look after it it'll be with you for life once you've used your first application which is the 232 four to six weeks later once you've now encouraged root growth which makes sense you're then going to go with something that's going to encourage greening all right, because now it's time for summer, guys. We want the green, green lawn. So that's when you're going to go with something called 713. Seven, obviously the first number, produces nitrogen. Nitrogen is good growth. That's the leaves. So we go with the 713. Notice the one, not as in the three from the first fertilizer, which is less about the roots. We've sorted that out now. We're moving on and allows good movement of all the nutrients between the plant cell walls. So all in all, we've got the starter and then we've got the give me green, all right? All right guys, so these are the gadgets that you need in order to distribute your fertilizer evenly and properly. Because amazingly enough, one of these bags a small bag, that's a 5 kg, should do 200 square meters of lawn. But interestingly enough, if you hand distribute it, you don't get that coverage. And that's why we over fertilize. By using a fertilizer distributor, you get an even spread with the right application and there is no chance of you over fertilizing and wasting. So, the first little guy is this. Isn't it cute? You hear it, all right? What it is, it's basically for smaller gardens. And you can adjust your aperture, in other words, how much fertilizer needs to get distributed out of here. And you can just pop it in and literally spread it around your garden. Of course, remember, any chemical fertilizer that you are using does need to be well watered in after you have fertilized. Or run around in the rain and do it then. This guy over here is just the big brother. All right, this is for larger gardens. So if we're talking a thousand square meters and more, I would strongly suggest you will need one of these guys. And it works on the same principle. It has a control here for the aperture to allow for the amount of fertilizer that has been produced to cover a square meter. Nice and easy. And of course, the last part of your exercise is to water well. Remember, a 10 minute watering is sufficient enough to allow your fertilizer to be able to get the nutrients to release and get into the soil. If the following day is a really hot day, I do suggest that you give it another watering in case there were any further nutrients sitting on the soil surface, which could lead to burning.
Alrighty, so there you have it. That's the 232, that's the 713. Okay, and the watering. So that was step three, four, and five. Now, we've had some questions come in, which are, and it's a very, very good question. Um, from Tanya Hodgson says, do I need to put fertilizer down before I put the grass seeds? Now, Tanya, that is all going to be in your prep. And if you follow the instructions on the back of the packet, it's going to tell you to put down some bone meal or to put down some superphosphate and you must put down a fertilizer. Okay, so your options are like this. You can put down a 232 um, into your soil as a prep because you are going to be watering. Um, this is the chemical option and the 232 you're also going to use, remember, when if you are doing your spring treatment. Now, please folks, also consider this. When buying fertilizer, biggest isn't always best. Nah, nah. Okay, if you've got a small lawn, you only need this 2 kg. This covers 66 square meters. There is nothing worse than ending up with a quarter bag of fertilizer that's left because it's a waste. Because you leave that somewhere in your garage, you go back to it, a couple of months later try and find it and it's turned into this hard mess. And then I know I've seen you, you take a hammer or any thing that you can find that would be as a beating object and then you smack it, smack it, smack it, smack it. That means that moisture has got there. When moisture is in there, your fertilizer is not as good, okay? You've lost some nutrition. So always read. You know, we're terrible. We're terrible at reading, you know? Just read. Read, 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 read. Um, whereas your slightly bigger pack over here, and this is your 10 kg, that'll cover over 300 square meters. Okay, that's if you follow the instructions and that's if you've got one of those vur, vur things, you know, the fertilizer distributor. Um, because I know what we do, we get, we go, so, so, you do interflora. I mean, if people could video, I swear, if people could video people <laughs> fertilizing their lawn. I mean, you go out in the Wellingtons and if it's raining or you're dodging lightning bolts or whatever, uh, seriously, we could make a seriously good TV show about that. But anyway. In terms of prep, the other thing that I would put down as my option would be this, Organic Vita Boost. Now, guys, this is a wonder product. And why am I saying this? Because this is made of vermicost castings. Vermi, yes, vermi castings. What is vermi castings? It's worm poo. Worm poo, okay? So, worms, when they eat decaying debris, when they eat organic matter, what happens in their gut is something quite amazing that they leave those little droppings and that that comes out that is excreted is full of micronutrients, trace elements, it conditions the soil, um, it's got lots of calcium in it, it's got lots of potash, lots of phosphorus um, and guys that is because of the worms. So here is a pelletalized form, um, these little korokis. Um, it is an organic fertilizer. It's not going to burn. So I would seriously recommend that you put this down prepping. Okay, so when you're turning your soil over, you're going to put this down 25 to 50 grams per square meter. Um, and it's not only for your lawn, but the other thing, you can use this for your shrubs. You can use it for your containers. And believe it or not, this is earthworm poo, but no smell. No smell at all. No, no. Just smells... um. Nitrogen, that's what I'm smelling. Because worm castings has got three to four times the normal nitrogen capacity of any compost. It's like, pow, packs a punch. And we know that that clever man Darwin was very, very interested in earthworms. Um, so yeah, earthworm castings, um, guys, this works. A charm, and you can also use it on your indoor plants as well. Um, follow the instructions as to how much you put on, but because it's organic, it's not going to burn, so you can even sprinkle it on your lawn if you wanted to. Okay, now, okay, so that's these guys. Let's get them out the way. Um, and what I want to tell you about now is the other drama and problems with lawn. And we spoke about it earlier. We spoke about the weeds. Oh, caramba. Yeah, I know, I know. Look at this patch of lawn that we dug out early this morning. I mean, my goodness, it is full of weeds. And you know, I don't particularly care what they called. I just want them gone. All right, now when you, <laughs> 
When you are trying to deal with weeds, guys, there are a few rules that you need to know. Number one is you don't need to know all the botanical scientific names. You just got to get rid of them. We know that weeds take hold in winter. So ideally, we want to get rid of them. Right. Whatever you do, try not let the weeds seed. Mm. Don't let them seed. Because one year seeding is, you all know it, seven years weeding. Okay, so there are various products on the market, folks, that can deal with this issue over here. Um, there are a couple of important things that I want you to remember, and I want you to remember this. That number one, you are going to need to invest in something like this, okay? This is a pressure sprayer, okay? Pressure sprayer. You're not doing this. Because by the time you've done that, you're going to have cramp and you're going to be walking funny. Okay? And you're not going to get the right distribution. Because the whole thing about lawn weeders, guys, is that you've got to follow the right application. Now, this lawn weeder is called Super Lawn Weeder, guys. It has three active ingredients. What does that mean? Three active ingredients, and we can see it on the back of the label here. There they are. One, two, three. This will do... Any broadleaf, whether it's an annual or a perennial weed. Annual weeds grow up die seed in a short period of time. Perennial weeds stay there for a long, long time, okay? And there's some weed killers. There are some selective weed killers that will not do perennial weeds, whereas this one will, okay? Because it's got three active ingredients. That's why it's called super lawn weeder. This is what I want you to do, and please listen to me very, very carefully. I want you to first invest in one of these. Next thing, follow the instructions. If it says, if it says four milliliters into one liter of water, don't think you're a smart aleck and double the dosage. Want ek gaan om nou lekker klap hier. No, double the dosage means you will probably kill your lawn as well. You know, it's not one of these. Guys, it's, 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 it's not one of these. Four moles. Yeah, come on, let's go up top here, ne? Yeah, let's let's make it eight. Yeah, then then it'll kill, and then it'll kill the weeds, eh? Dead. No, you're gonna kill your lawn. That's why they give you a syringe so that you can measure it properly, okay? And into one liter, four moles into one liter, and that will cover ten square meters. Really? 10 square meters? Which is why you need a pressure sprayer and not a tss, 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 okay? Because with 10, one, mil, one liter, it's going to just literally be that. You are doing there and back and that's it. You are not doing this. Big weed. Do it, do it, do it. Kill it, kill it. You can only kill something once. You can't kill it quick. You can't kill it slow. You only kill it once. Um, so when you're putting it down, please, next rule. It must be on a hot, sunny, windless day. Because if you do that, and it sprays off there, onto your shrubbery, it will kill your shrubs because a shrub is considered a broad leaf. Okay? That's how it differentiates because lawn is a narrow leaf. So that's how these chemicals differentiate and don't kill your lawn. Sometimes if you get your mixture slightly wrong or you apply a little bit too much, your lawn might yellow for the next two days or so, but that soon comes right. Okay, so hot, sunny, windless day. If you don't like your neighbor, you do this. No, don't do that, please. Don't do that. Okay. Um, hot, sunny, windless day. Uh, try, and, uh, try and get your application <laughs> as, as fine a mist as possible once, twice, that's it. You're not going back. What will happen in, in the next two to three weeks is that these weeds will simply just shrivel up. I'm often asked, guys, what about the cats and the dogs? What about the cats and the dogs? Very, very simple, guys, because you're applying it on a hot, sunny, windless day. You keep the dogs and the cats inside for an hour or off the lawn just for an hour because these little fine particles that we sprayed here are going to dry out so quickly. Really, within an hour, it'll be dry. Then you can let the cats and the dogs out, okay? 
then it's fine. Absolutely fine. Um, we've used this. We've, we've used it in the lawn many, many times. And there have been no fatalities as long as you are applying the product correctly. Okay. Um, next thing I want you to know is, so we've done the wind. We've got your applicator. Um, guys, ah, very important. Do not cut your lawn before spraying. Okay, ideally, you want to leave your lawn for about two weeks to look quite raggedy. Okay, quite raggedy. You want these weeds to be looking as big and gorgeous and delicious as possible because this is a surface application. You are spraying it onto the surface, so you don't want small little weeds that you've actually chopped off with the lawnmower. Um, you want them to be big, gorgeous, delicious, and juicy. Because then, when you apply it, it gets taken up very quickly through the stomata into the weeds, and it'll get, get the job done much quicker. All right. So, guys, that is Super Lawn Weeder. Lawn Protector, I want you to consider, because when we go into changes of season, what do we get? We get Lawn Caterpillar. We get some fungal infections. Now, the other thing I want to tell you about, and this is what we use especially in areas where the lawn is stressed, is that we use Root Pro. Guys, we've spoken about EcoBuzz Root Pro. Um, it is a good fungal inoculant that basically paralyzes bad fungi, bad bacteria, so bad diseases, which are found where soil and plants are under stress. If it's been in shade all, all winter, that soil is damp. Okay, it's damp. And where you have dampness, you have onset of diseases. So we inoculate that section of lawn that I was telling you about. Every three months, we use EcoBuzz Root Pro because what that does is paralyzes any bad bacteria or diseases that would have been there. The trichoderma is a completely natural product. Um, it's a fungal inoculant. You just pour it on. You can put it on your indoor plants as well. I use it on my succulents. Um, and if a plant's looking like it's having a bad day, or it's not looking so lacquer, I give it EcoBuzz. If all else fails, I just give it a whack of that um, because I know I can't do any harm at all. All right. Next thing I want you to consider, please, is your lawn mowers. Now that you've done your spring treatment, you've scarified, you've got rid of the weeds, whatever, Check underneath your lawnmower. Turn it on its side, okay? Please have a look and see, is there any debris there? Is there any lawn clippings that have stuck? Because that wetness, when you cut the juices of the, of the grass, they get stuck on the undercarriage. On that undercarriage is where a million lawn weed seeds live. Millions! Okay, so make sure you always clean it up afterwards. Your garden service. Deep breathing. You can do it. Make sure that your garden services clean their equipment before they set foot in your garden. Very important, especially if they're using trimmers, weed eaters. Make sure that they are being cleaned because transporting and moving weed seeds from one garden to the other is one of the quickest ways of getting your lawn infested with weeds. Guys, I think we have covered the 101 on fixing your lawn for spring. Um, spring is in the air, we can smell it. I picked some beautiful jasmine yesterday morning. That sweet smelling, gorgeous jasmine of spring that just takes you away um, and takes me back to my childhood and that tells me spring. Right guys, there's lots for you to do in the garden. Lots at the moment because it's all happening. I want you to get your pen and paper, make sure that you're ready or take a picture of it or record it or do whatever, but you've got to make sure that you do these following jobs this weekend. And guys, whilst you're busy doing all of these things, remember we all need a bit of downtime. Late afternoon, done your gardening work, the bones are a bit creaky, you've got your favourite Oros juice with you. Um, 
Yeah, right. Um, and make sure that you've got the greatest company that you need, which is the gardener and detail need. Folks, and Grow to Eat, our August issue is on shelf now, where we are going to teach you all things and everything. We've got a beautiful garden in here, a most spectacular garden that is going to inspire. We've got pruning. We've got flower bombs for your garden. We've got what to do now tasks plus much more um, right here in your favorite favorite gardening magazine grow to eat um, how we teach you how to grow and of course how to cook with them we talk about okra we talk about rhubarb get your peas right um, guys there's so much inspiration in these pages it's 96 pages of goodness um, and if even if you're just starting out um, this is really going to help you um, folks, a big shout out to our sponsors um, for this lawn segment because we all need help when it comes to our lawns, even me, to Mayford Wonder Fertilizers and Macro Home and Garden. Um, thank you so much for your support. It truly is appreciated. Remember to go out and grab your magazine, guys, at your local garden centre. Um, we will see you again in two weeks' time. It is, or is it next week? Next week. Oh, uh, no, we're seeing you next week on Thursday. Um, we're doing a masterclass. We're doing a builder's masterclass next week, Thursday. Um, guys, also remember to jump onto, if you are on our YouTube channel, remember to scroll down because there are lots of videos in there that are going to give you some really good advice, tips and areas that you might be battling with. Folks, it's been an absolute pleasure spending the last hour with you. Um, take care of you and yours. Um, be safe and sanitize. And most importantly, happy gardening. God bless you all. Gardening with Tanya was proudly brought to you by Mayford. Grow your own lush green lawn. Macro Home and Garden. High quality products, a must have for every gardener. Wonder, for the love of gardening. And TanyaFisser.com, for all your gardening goodies and supplies. All plants kindly supplied by Blackwoods, the home of gardening. Calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.